It took a while to get this one going because I kept getting distracted. Do you guys want to go ride bikes? But you don't know jack about ADHD. <laughs> Hey people, this is D-News, I'm Trace, and I just want to throw this out there first. I was diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder back in the late 80s. It was just called ADD back then. But to be frank, you've probably all heard of ADHD. It's everywhere. But what do we really know about this? A lot of people think that ADHD is new, but it ain't. Cell phones did not cause ADHD. Neither did cartoons, video games, the internet, or kids not going outside enough, or whatever. The good old days were filled with kids chock full of ADHD. Take that, adults! Am I an adult now? Crap. A Scottish-born physician and author named Alexander Crichton described a pervasive mental restlessness in his book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Origin of Mental Derangement. That was in 1798. It was a thrilling read, I'm sure. Later in 1845, Dr. Heinrich Hoffmann wrote the story of Fidgety Philip describing a kid who just couldn't sit still. And 60 years later, in 1908, German pediatrician Aldebar Scherny said some fidgety children had a great need to move about, they couldn't stick to anything, and had an inability to concentrate on their schoolwork. Sound familiar? Yeah, I thought so. Over the years, this fidgety disease was known as minimal brain dysfunction, hyperkinesis, attention deficit disorder, hey, hey, that's me, and finally, ADHD. There are three parts, inattentive, impulsive and hyperactive types, and you can be diagnosed with one, two, or all three of those, and it definitely exists, and it has a long and twitchy history. So how did it get so prevalent today? Medical professionals are still debating that, but they recognize that there's an issue. Germany's diagnosis rate grew 381% from 1989 to 2001, and across the board there is a huge gender bias in diagnosis and medication. In 2011, only 2% 2 of 11-year-old girls diagnosed with ADHD were medicated, compared to 7% of boys. In the 1950s, a new drug was introduced to treat people with this strange disorder, Ritalin. Ritalin is a stimulant that boosts dopamine levels affecting the prefrontal cortex which is thought to control complex cognitive behavior, personality expression, decision making, and the moderation of social behavior. Makes a lot of sense. The drug helps the PFC do its job while suppressing excess neuron firings around the rest of the brain. It cleans up the signals in there. It turns out we ADHD people can get distracted by shiny things in our environment, but also our own overactive brain boxes. In spite of what you might have heard, Ritalin is addictive when taken improperly. So much so, it appears on the Drug Enforcement Agency's Drugs of Concern list in the late 90s, along with LSD and cocaine, which, by the way, is a chemical cousin of Ritalin. While Ritalin isn't highly addictive when taken in pill form, which is how it's usually prescribed, when snorted or injected, it can mess up your dopamine levels, your circulatory system, and your respiratory system. Across all these different areas, ADHD has this mythical stigma of disorganization and a lack of self-control which is why we're only just realizing that adults can be affected by ADHD too. Unfortunately, adults with ADHD are more likely to have other psychiatric disorders and significantly more likely to commit suicide or be incarcerated. The moral of this story is ADHD is a complex mental issue, and if you think you may have ADHD, don't just grab your friend's drugs and start popping pills. There are lots of resources out there for people who manage even without meds, like me. Do you have personal experience with ADHD? Share your thoughts down in the comments, and remember people, there are those out there living with mental disorders, and they are watching this, and they are reading this, so try and be respectful, please. Thanks a lot for tuning in to D-News today, everybody. I'm Trace. See you around.